Beef over a piece of steak turns into this huge brawl involving 40 people at a golden corral in Pennsylvania. The cell phone video shows punches being thrown, chairs being tossed around. Witnesses say the mayhem began when a man got upset because the person in line behind him got his steak first. The kitchen staff tried to explain why one steak can take longer to cook than another. The man didn't get it, and this was the result. Fortunately, the restaurant says everybody walked away with just cuts and bruises. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Shalom. First and foremost, all praises, glory, and honor be unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Recha HaKodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone who rule well. Salutations to the hopefully elect out there pushing this word of truth, sincerity, and indeed. Your brother Chabat from the great millstone Chicago branch coming at you with a quick Lord willing edifying lesson. And this is just um, a foreshadowing of things to come. As you can see, what transpired a big brawl in a golden corral <clears throat> involving, you know, 40 plus people, basically over a nigga moment. Somebody <laughs> jumped in line, grabbed a piece of steak, words were exchanged, and this happened. And it just goes to show how easily people are triggered, all right? And, and just how people are just not in their right mind these days. It really wasn't that serious, all right? Somebody wanted to be rude or be hasty. You know, you really just got to let people just have it, you know. Not saying be a damn punk, use discernment, you know, but there's there's ways to quell and to squash things. But, see, people are prideful. You know, the scriptures say only by pride cometh contention. So, you know, when you have prideful people and <laughs> a quote-unquote nigga moment happens, Chaos is definitely bound to ensue, all right? Stripes and, and, and bloodshed. And this is what happens. But, and this ain't the first time. This, this happens all the time, especially in America. I can't even say all around the world, I'm sure, but especially here in America. Shit like this happens all the time over the most trivial matters. People fight like this over TVs, you know? People fight like, you know, you know, Black Friday, <laughs> people rushing the store, bombarding merchandise, niggas end up fighting. People fight like this over uh, uh, gym shoes, Jordans, you know, people fight like this over food. But real soon, the days are coming that people are going to be putting each other to death over food. A great and sore orchestrated famine is getting ready to really sink its teeth here in this America, Babylon the Great. And soon people are really going to be fighting for their lives, fighting to survive. All right. They had a damn all you can eat buffet getting into it. Imagine when it ain't nothing to eat. You come across some little substance. <laughs> some little meat and the, the person around you, hey, this shit is dog eat dog at that point. Now what? You, you're going to have bloodshed. You're going to have people dying because it's going to be survival of the fittest very soon. Okay. Those truckers over in uh, Canada that are still protesting. Yeah. A lot of goods and merchandise that's supposed to uh, come in from, from Canada and all around the world, it's not making it into the Americas. There's a stop log, if I'm saying that right, or a log jam of cargo ships off the coast of America just sitting in the ocean. It has a, a full, a full of food, all types of things like that. Is just not making it into America's borders. So it's causing a short. So the days are coming where there's going to be scarcity of, of steak, chicken, you know, food, period. The things you need. And with this microwave generation here in Americans, here in America, you know, Americans are very impatient. Everything is now, now, fast. I want it now and I want it fast. Okay? People get hungry and they just downright get demonic. 
they have a term called hangry when you're just hungry and because you're hungry, you get angry. <laughs> they show you those commercials, those Snickers commercials. You're not yourself when you're hungry. A person just being a complete douchebag, unreasonable until they bite the Snickers and then, <laughs> you know, they go from being Cho uh, Joe Pesci, <laughs> the good fellas, Joe Pesci, and they go back to being themselves. And, and that's how people are here in this America, man. And woo wee. When it gets real, these people are going to snap. This is the book of chapter Luke 23. Salakia, this is the book of Luke chapter 23, verse 31. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? The green tree meaning, hey, you know, be even though, you know, shit is very expensive, you can still go to the store. Even though there's a shortage on things, you can still go to Wingstop. <laughs> you know, you can still go to Buffalo Wild Wings, you know, get you a, a, a 10 piece. All right. All flats. <laughs> Parmesan garlic. You know, you can still do these things. But the tree is getting ready to dry up because, you, you know, these people, they can still go out to the Golden Corral buffet and, and, and enjoy a meal. OK, you might got to be, you know, jabbed up nowadays, depending on where you at. But nonetheless, you can enjoy a meal and, and shit like this ensues. Over a piece of steak turns into this huge brawl involving 40 people at a golden corral in Pennsylvania. So here it is. The tree is still green. Yet at the slightest misunderstanding, you can be getting clocked across your head with a damn high chair, <laughs> you know. But the, the tree is green. You can you can still do these things. So when it turns dry, meaning when it, when things are scarce, when there's a famine in the land, just imagine what people are going to be doing. OK, just imagine the lengths people are going to go to to make sure that they're fed and to make sure that not only they are fed, their families are fed. Imagine the, the violent acts of desperation that will transpire. OK, at that point, even people are going to be on the menu real soon. OK, the scriptures say a man shall snatch at the left hand and, and eat on his right hand. All right. Children. Elderly. At that point, it ain't going, you know. The, the spirit on these people is going to be highly demonic and it's going to be uh, uh, they're not going to spare. When the Lord really, really uh, uh, turns them deaf angels up, these people are not going to spare one another. OK, there's going to be a lot of spirits that are created for vengeance that lay on sore strokes, as it is written in uh, the book of Sirach. I believe that's the 39th chapter. It says they're going to appease the wrath of him that made them. So when Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, when, he, when he's finally had enough. Oh, man, it's, it's going to be a very, very horrifying sight. In the world, there's going to be a, 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 a man. It's going to be a horror show, man. It's going to be a real life horror movie outside all day, every day. You know, that's why, hey, man, we, 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 we strive and we push the fear of the Lord. The scriptures say through the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. This is why we preach. The words that we preach, this is why we preach uh, obedience. We preach the fear of the Lord. OK, we preach the hey, denounce corruption, turn away from your wicked ways because great mayhem is coming. OK. Look at these people, look how they act now. All right. Imagine how they're going to act when they haven't eaten anything in, in two days. Three days. All right. It's going to get very grimy out here, man. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 18. For because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and man shall be afraid. Right. And America is the most prideful nation on the planet Earth, man. So the scriptures just tell you, hey, man, they're, they're going to be cities are going to be troubled. Houses are going to be destroyed. Men are going to be afraid. All right, men. 
are going to be afraid. They're going to be at, well, they already acting like women. <laughs> They're going to be even more like women in that day. All right. It says, verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. You see that? So these are complete strangers going at each other. Hey, man, there's going to be people that you knew that, you know, it's going to be your neighbors. All right. Trying to see, trying to get with you. <laughs> All right. Childhood friends. Family members, spouses, shit. Hell, even the family dog might turn on your ass when he ain't eating in a while, man. You know, if the spirit ain't on you, if the spirit of, if the fear of the Lord ain't, ain't on you and his spirit of protection is not covering you and your household, man, any and everybody is going to be on the menu. And people aren't going to care. They're not going to care about your, your infant baby, your toddler. They're not going to care about your elderly grandfather or grandmother. They're not going to care about your uh, sickly spouse. Okay. People, are, man, look, they go mow you. They go mow each other over, man. These people are going to devour each other, man. You know. These are the times we coming in, man. So, hey, man, let us just uh, stay prayed up, man. Hope this was edifying. All praises and glory and honor to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, Bashim, Kakwadash, Shalom, and above all.